Hello, and welcome to scrapbook.com. I am Marisha Dean, and today I'm going to teach you how to create a see-through window shaker card. So let's get started. To begin, I'm going to bring in my card base, which is an A2 standard sized top folding card. I'm also going to bring in my panel, which is cut down to three and three quarters by five inches. Using a circle die, I'm going to position it on the panel and using some mint tape, I'm going to secure the die to the panel. Then from there, I'm going to use my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine to die cut the panel. To create the see-through element on my card, I need to die cut another circle from my card front. So I'm going to bring back in my panel, I'm going to position it on the card base, and then I added cement tape to the back of the circle. I'm then going to place it on the card base. I'm then going to remove the panel. I'm now going to bring back in the circle die, and using the mint tape, I'm going to secure the die to the card base. Then from there, I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. I'm going to double check just to make sure that the card base and the panel are in alignment and it looks like everything is good to go. So now it's on to the next step. For the windows of the shaker card, I'm going to cut out two pieces of acetate to adhere the acetate to the card base, I'm going to use adhesive tape from scrapbook.com. I'm then going to adhere the piece of acetate to the card base, and I'm just giving it a good press just to make sure that it is secured. Next, I'm going to bring in from scrapbook.com their happy birthday rub on transfers. I selected the Yay You sentiment. I'm then going to cut it out. And then from there, I'm going to remove the backing paper. I'm then going to position the sentiment on the front of the acetate window. And using a popsicle stick, I'm going to give it a good firm press to make sure I have a good transfer of the sentiment to the acetate. After I remove the transfer sheet, it is on to the next step. Next, I'm going to bring my panel over to my Misty and using a sentiment from scrapbook.com's happy birthday stamp set, I'm going to select the happy birthday sentiment. I'm going to position it on my panel and then I'm going to stamp it twice to make sure I have a good impression. Then from there, I'm going to flip the panel over and repeating the same step that I did with the card base, I'm going to add some adhesive tape and then the piece of acetate. Once I'm certain that the acetate is secured to my panel, I'm then going to bring in some foam tape. Now I want to make sure that there is enough room for the sequence to move around in the shaker card. So I'm going to double up the foam tape. After I fold over my foam tape, I'm then going to cut it in half. That way this will allow me to easily position and place the foam tape around the circle of the window. Then from there, I'm going to add additional pieces of foam tape to the back of my panel. Next, I'm going to bring in an anti-static powder tool. This will prevent the sequins from sticking to the foam tape. I'm now going to place some sequins on the front of my card base, and then I'm going to adhere the panel to the card base. I'm going to give it a good firm press to make sure everything is secured. And then from there, it is on to the next step. To finish this card, I brought in scrapbook.com's nested stitch balloons die set, and I die cut a few balloons off camera. I'm then going to position them on my card front. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to use adhesive glue to adhere them to my card. Then from there, I'm going to bring in some gold embroidery floss, and I'm going to tie a piece around each of the balloons. Then from there, I'm going to trim the string down, creating an illusion that the balloons are floating. And then thereafter, I'm going to add some gold embellishments to my card front. Then after that, this card is complete. 
And there you have it, a fun, easy see-through window shaker card to create for your loved one. When it comes to organizing my birthday cards, I rely on scrapbook.com's Craft Room Basics Small Envelope Organizer and Tab Dividers with Labels. I'm going to place a label sticker at the top of each divider, and then I'm going to write the month on each sticker. The storage container is divided into two sections, so one section will be reserved for the months January through June. The second section will be reserved for the months July through December. To store my cards, I brought in the card and matching envelope, and I'm going to place it in a clear cellophane card bag. I'm not going to seal it. I'm actually going to bring in cement tape and add a piece of tape to the top of the tab. And then from there, I'm going to write the name of the recipient along with their birth date. If the card is going to be mailed, I'm going to add the recipient's name, address, and stamp on the envelope. I'm then going to place the card in the front of each tab. For example, the January birthday recipient's cards will be placed in front of the January tab. The same for February, those cards will be placed in front of that tab, and so forth. So when it's time for me to give out birthday cards, I can refer to the monthly tab, remove the card and envelope, and be ready to deliver it to my recipient. Thank you for joining me on today. I appreciate you for stopping by. I hope this tutorial has inspired you to create and store your birthday cards. The products that are featured in this video are listed and linked below. I'm sending you love and a whole lot of hugs. Until next time, please take care.